Welcome, and thank you for joining us for another Piano Side Worship. We're coming to you from St. Paul United Methodist Church in Benson, a historic neighborhood in Omaha, Nebraska. I want to thank the musicians that you just heard, Hank Robinson, Heidi Copeland, Spencer Robinson, John Huff, and Kylie Holman, as well as Jerry Brabeck, our Minister of Worship, and Hank Robinson, our wonderful volunteer who edits these worship services for us. We're very glad to have you with us today. Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, we give thanks for this and each day, for the blessings that we receive. We lift to you the prayers of our hearts, our concerns, our worries, the burdens that we carry, and pray that we might release them so that we might be free to see your work in this world. Help us to say yes to your call to discipleship, to find new ways to serve you in this world, even though they might come in unexpected ways. We give thanks for your presence in our life and pray that we might learn to be a blessing to others. Amen. We'll be sharing communion today, and I invite you to use your pause button as you will to prepare. Um, if you could find some juice and bread or a cracker and water or whatever you find sufficient for communion, we will be sharing that in a little bit together. Our lectionary today is from the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John, reading from the 10th chapter and beginning with the first verse. Jesus said, I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. 
They won't follow a stranger, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again, I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life, indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Oh, thank you for that reading, Kylie. Um, here we have the scripture, you know, we're following the resurrection and we hear this um, gospel talking about sheep and gates and thieves and robbers and, and strangers. And there's a lot going on, but it's not the longest um, scripture ever. So I thought we'd kind of work our way through it. Uh, we first encounter this notion of thieves and robbers um, and their influence on the sheep. And I think we should note that we are talking about sheep but the sheep might be a metaphor. The, the sheep might represent people. That's okay, don't be offended. I mean, who doesn't love sheep, right? Um, so we've got thieves and robbers, um, and that, that's bad. When you interact with a thief or a robber, you end up generally with less than you started with. Thieves, you end up with less because of their trickery. Robbers, you end up with less because of violence. But either way, it's an encounter that is one that you generally notice, either in the moment or afterwards, and it is noteworthy for the loss that occurs because of that encounter. So the thieves and robbers are set up in contrast to the relationship that we might have with the shepherd. Because when one encounters a shepherd, you always leave that relationship with more. More tasty meadow, more lovely brook that's rippling past you, more comfort, more care, more less confusion. So to encounter a shepherd is the opposite of encountering a thief or a robber. These two stand in opposition to each other in this gospel story. Now, we also hear that the shepherd is not a stranger to the sheep. The shepherd is familiar to the sheep. And this word stands out as significant. The sheep aren't just looking for any shepherd. It's the shepherd that they know. Uh, the shepherd that they recognize. Now, uh, different churches I've served have a different knowledge base around shepherds. And I can't see you to look in your eyes to see what your knowledge base is. But I will share with you that I have somewhat of a knowledge base around shepherds because my grandpa Bob was a shepherd. My brother and I, uh, when we would go out to the family farm in Saline County in Nebraska, we were always perplexed why the sheep didn't want us to pet them. Uh, they really liked Grandpa Bob. When they heard his voice or when one sheep would spot him, they would all go running towards him. But when we came and we tried to chase them so we could pet them, we just couldn't understand why they didn't want to be near us. I and mean, what could possibly go wrong with two children trying to grab you? But Grandpa Bob, uh, with his kind eyes and way, the sheep recognized him. They knew him. Um, they had figured out that he's where the food came from. But they surrounded him. And they met him at the gate, that point of entry into the space. Now, of note, um, and this is not really a source of embarrassment for us. It's just something everyone in Saline County knows. Bob Allsweed's fences didn't really hold up well. Now, Bible times, you needed a shepherd especially because you didn't have fences in the way that we do now. But I will tell you that Bob Allsweed's grandchildren in the 80s, 
and the 70s, spent a lot of time running around trying to help corral sheep. Uh, oh, yeah, and I see that our videographer has had that experience as well in East Tennessee, perhaps. Um, kind of like trying to catch a sheep to pet it in the pen, children are not always the best at wrangling sheep because, again, we're running around waving our arms, wondering why they won't come towards us. So the savvy shepherd puts the grandchildren on the end of wherever the sheep are that he does not want the sheep to go, puts himself closer to the gate where he wants the sheep to end up, and then any adult who appears to be calm and sensible is in the middle, trying to guide the sheep away from the grandchildren and towards the shepherd back to safety, back to the, the place where they generally will not be harmed. Now, sheep are not your smartest animal, and in my family, we, we happen to have experts on all kinds of animals in the family. People with PhDs in various types of animals, so we all agree that the swine, is, pigs are the smartest, sheep are the dumbest, it's fine, we're, we're over it. Uh, but if you go to visit your grandfather's house, one thing you might do that's helpful is to tell your grandfather if you see any sheep with their heads stuck in the fence, because sheep do that. They just get their heads stuck in the fence because they're just not really thinkers. They don't think things through. They just go looking for stuff and they get stuck. So, and I realize again, Saline County in this era is not the same as Bible times, but sheep haven't changed that much. They need some help. They need some guidance. You got to keep them from getting stuck in the fence overnight. Who knows what they're going to do to get out and hurt themselves. And if they start wandering around, you have no idea what ravine they'll end up, what coyote will find them before you do. Uh, or they might get run over by a car. You just don't know what's going to happen. So we as disciples have to work a little bit hard to put our ego in check and say, eh, the gospel is saying that we're kind of like those sheep that need some help. We might get loose. We might forget the path. We might get our heads stuck in a fence or an idea that isn't very helpful. Uh, <laughs> but, but, um, the point of the faith life is this. There is a good shepherd. There is a good shepherd. And the call to the human disciple is this. Let's say you're having a day where you kind of feel like you got your head stuck in the fence. Let's say you're having a day where you followed all your buddies when they went wandering down the road and got lost and couldn't figure out where the food was. Got stuck in a ravine, a bunch of brambles, who knows what it was. We're the people, not the sheep, who believe that there is a good shepherd and that we are called to do our best to recognize the good shepherd and to be followers, not in the way that sheep follow whoever got out of the pen first, but followers who are intentional disciples, who decide we will not be thieves and robbers. We will not fall prey to deception or violence. We will choose a path where we nurture one another in faith, where we find safe places to grow, where we learn from one another, even on the days when it's rainy and muddy and there's not quite enough alfalfa to cover up the muddy spots. Mm. I mean, there are limits to how far you can work these metaphors, but what we hear in this story is an assertion that the Good Shepherd will always be present and the abundance that we find in the Good Shepherd will always be stronger than the trickery and violence of the thieves and the robbers. In the scripture then, we hear about the abundance of God's love and the abundance of that welcome and the surety of it. And in that way, we think about the way of the shepherd, that path of faith, which does have challenges, but is grounded in an invitation to the faith life. Um, in this story, we're not chastised for being sheep. We are invited, we are invited to follow the way of the shepherd, to find that which is good, 
to seek an abundant life, to lay aside those distractions and to embrace that life in the community of faith, which grows, helps us to grow as individuals, helps us to grow as a community, helps us to grow in our understanding of the presence of the Good Shepherd so that on the days when it's difficult, when the thieves and the robbers, either literal but probably metaphorical, are all that we seem to find in the path, we can remember that we belong first to the way of abundance, the way of God's love. And that gate, which is described in this scripture, is that opening that continues to open to us in the faith life every time that we remember and say yes to the call of discipleship in whatever form that that takes. We are not sheep wandering around. We are people of God who have been named and claimed and who say yes to the call to be part of the world that the great shepherd opens to us, the way of abundance, the way of life. I give thanks for the people in my life who have helped to shepherd me um, not through thievery or robbery, but who have shepherded me with ideas, with the invitation to reach out and service, who have taught me to be concerned about people who live on the margins, who have taught me that wherever I go and however I do that, the Good Shepherd will be with me. I give thanks for the shepherds in your life and for the invitation that we are given to walk the way of the Good Shepherd. Amen. Won't you join me in these familiar words that lead us into communion? The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving 
as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to thank you again for joining us today. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, who knows what platform next week, and we're glad to be your friends. As we go forward in faith, might we remember 
that no matter what thieves and robbers we encounter, we are always accompanied by the Good Shepherd and welcomed, welcomed always by God's gracious love. Amen. <laughs>